Okay, hello chess players. Today we're going to talk about a concept called the three rank separation principle draw. And it happens in Rook and Pawn games. If you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. Now in Rook and Pawn End games, it's really critical that when you're defending and you're trying to achieve a draw, that you put your Rook in the position where it has a maximum checking distance. It's not really all that relevant where that position is. A lot of people are like, oh, always put your rook behind the pawn, or always put your rook on the side of the pawn. This is not correct. There isn't an always motif for rook and pawn endgames. But what you do always want to do is you always want to put your rook where you have the maximum checking distance. In this case, that is in front of the pawn. And as a matter of fact, if you had your rook behind the pawn in a position like this, you would be losing. White would be able to win. But in this case, because you have your rook in front of the pawn, and you have your maximum checking distance, which needs to be at least three ranks of separation in order to achieve the draw, black achieves the draw here, even though the black king is cut off by one file. And this is really important to remember. In this case, black achieves the draw by simply continually putting white in check. You just play rook b8 check. After king a5, you would play rook a8 check. After king b6, we put the king in check again. The point is, is on king c7 and king a7, we're simply going to take this pawn. If this pawn had been advanced one more square, this wouldn't be an issue. We would be able to find a way to advance that pawn, and I'm going to go over that position in a second. But in this case, the king is going to have to retreat to defend the pawn. We're going to play check. We can have this with another check, king a4, another check, king b3. And now if the king does hide behind the pawn, we simply play rook to b8. This attacks the pawn and effectively prevents it from moving forward, which stops white from making progress. Now what's important is we need to understand what scenarios we're getting a draw with the defending side and what scenarios is the defending side losing, or if you're the attacking side, what scenarios is the attacking side winning. So if we adjust all of this up one rank, so if white's a little bit further advanced and we don't have those three ranks of separation, white should be able to win here fairly easily. For example, king a6, rook a8, king b7 simply attacks the rook, there is no rook b8 check, that pawn is going to advance on the next move uh, with b5 to b6, and white should be winning. So let's take a look at another scenario. Let's say that the enemy king, or the defending king, is cut off by two entire files. You would think that this situation should be winning for white no matter what. You would think if we get two entire files of, you know, having the king cut off from the pass pawn, that we should not be able to achieve a draw with the black pieces. That is actually not the case. This position is a draw. Uh, the position of the white rook is actually unfortunate right here. Uh, having the rook behind your pass pawn is not always the best location for the rook. I, I cannot emphasize this enough in rook and pawn games. Uh, if you watch my video, How to Win 90% of Rook and Pawn games, I talk about this. Uh, people will oftentimes spend, you know, three tempos to get their rook behind a pawn because they've been told that's the right place for the rook. No, <laughs> there's bigger concepts going on in rook and pawn games. One of them is just the fundamental nature of rooks themselves. Rook actually can, rooks actually control the exact same number of squares no matter where they are on the chessboard. It's always seven in each direction, so it's always a total of 14. Uh, rooks always control 14 squares anywhere on an open board. So it's kind of silly to think that there's an ideal location for a rook that's universal uh, when they universally control the same number of squares. Uh, but anyways, in this case, the rook's location for white is unfortunate. And if, for example, we play king c5 and then rook c8, we don't have any way of coming here, here, or here with our king. And this is really critical. Uh, the black king is cutting us off, so the black defending king position is actually ideal here. It's cutting us off from going over here. But even if the black's king position was a little less than ideal, we still wouldn't be able to go to d6, d5, or d4 because that rook d8 check would actually skewer our king and our rook, and we would still lose. So in this case, we're stuck with our king still in this zone where the rook is able to give infinite checks, and we're not able to step towards the rook without the rook capturing our pawn. So we're basically in the same holding pattern. We have to play king a5, rook a8, king b5, rook b8, king c4, rook c8, king b3, rook b8. It's the exact same thing as before, even though we had the defending king cut off by two entire files. So what situations where we have the king cut off by two entire files are actually winning? Well, in this case, if we simply change the position of the white rook, 
to in front of our pawn, where it can offer a shield to these checks, we would actually win. So for example, we could play king to c5, rook c8, king b6, rook b8, rook b7. And once we block all these checks with the shield after rook takes b7, king takes b7, you'll note that the black king is too far away to stop our pawn. So king d5, b5, king c5, he is one move short of actually stopping this past pawn from going all the way to the end of the board and creating a queen. And therefore, white should be able to win from here. So let's look at another scenario. How many files do we have to have the king cut off to guarantee a win? Well, if you have the black king cut off uh, three entire files, the three ranks of separation is not enough to get the draw anymore. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that you now have access to the square d6. Actually, d5 works just as well. Mainly, you have access to this file. That's really critical. And here's the reason why, is if you have two files to work with for your checking distance and for your king, once they play a move like, let's say, king c5, rook c8 check, you can play either king d5 or king d6. It actually doesn't matter which one. The point is, is if they continue to check you here, We'll just throw in king d5 for fun, and we'll have them continue to check you. Rook to d8 check, king to c6, rook c8 check, king to b7. And at that point, you're attacking the rook, and you're going to be able to advance your pawn. So they're obviously not going to do that. So we're going to have rook c8, king d6, and then we're going to have rook b8. The point is, is when they play rook b8 right here, you're going to be able to win by simply taking your rook and protecting your pawn. You take your rook and you simply put it behind your passed pawn. And in this case, behind the passed pawn is the correct location for the pawn. And because the rook is behind the passed pawn and this is the right location, you'll be able to advance your passed pawn at some point. So, for example, let's just say rook to b5. You could play king c6, rook back, you could push. Or any number of other things black could try to defend. If he puts you in check continually, you can just simply attack the rook. When the rook moves, you're simply going to push the pawn, and this is going to be winning as well. The point is, is with this much uh, with this much separation, you're going to be able to win no matter what. Um, as soon as you bring your king to d5 or whatever, when the rook checks you, he's not skewering a rook. You have two ranks to work you have two files to work with here. The king can safely approach the rook. Eventually, the rook will have to come in front of this pawn the rook will have to go to the b8 square we simply step behind and there is not going to be a way for black to stop you from advancing the pawn for example rook d8 king c6 rook b8 b5 we're advancing the pawn so if you have this many files of separation if the king is cut off by three files and you have two files to work with it doesn't matter that the defending rook gets in front of the pawn with three ranks of separation and has that massive checking distance the defending side is still not going to be able to draw. This is going to be a win for white. So those are all the situations where the three rank separation principle achieves a draw and all the situations where the three rank separation principle is uh, not quite enough to get the draw and where white is going to be winning. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found uh, these ideas useful and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.